no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board. Today's show presented by Black Sunday. If anybody out there is looking for the dopest Raiders gear out there, go to blacksundayshop.com where you guys can go ahead and get your hands on some awesome Raiders gear. This t-shirt, only $24.99. So coming up here on today's show, we're about to get into some Raiders off-season winners and off-season losers. Now I got five winners three losers. I'm going to tell you why each player is where there is. I'm going to talk about why they succeeded in training camp, maybe why they struggled in training camp, why they succeeded in the preseason. But I'm going to go about this and ranking them from five all the way down to one, and then from losers, three all the way down to one. So number five on my list here for Raiders offseason winners, it's Alex Leatherwood, the rookie out of Alabama, selected number one uh, first round 17 overall. I mean, you want to talk about a guy that had a lot of stuff on his shoulders, and he has looked phenomenal in the preseason. He's looked great in training camp as well. The other reason why I'm actually going to tip my cap to John Gruden, tip my cap to Mike Mayock as well, is because Christian Darsaw, he's already banged up. Tevin Jenkins, he's injured. And one of the biggest reasons why I did not like this pick at first is because I was like, man, I want Tevin Jenkins. Man, I want Christian Darsaw. But those guys are already dealing with injuries in their rookie season. And Leatherwood, he has been more than happy to be repping silver and black. And he's been just mauling guys on the offensive line. So the reason why I have him at number five is because there was a lot of other players that I was very impressed with. And that we did see a little bit more in the preseason. But overall, I wasn't very confident in the Raiders taking him at 17. And now I can sit here and honestly say that I can't wait to see this young man get to work for the upcoming season. So what I want you guys to do right now, if you're ready for some Raiders football, if you're ready for some regular season games, I want you to go ahead and like this video right now. I mean, I could not be more excited for this season. Don't get me wrong. I was excited for the final year in Oakland, and I was excited for last season too. But this is the first year that Raider fans can actually go to Allegiant Stadium. The first year that we're going to get a taste of what Raiders football is like in Las Vegas, and I couldn't be more excited. I'm going to be in Las Vegas for every single one of these Raiders home games, and I want you guys to go ahead and like this video. Number four on my list here for some Raiders offseason winners, Darius Phylon at the defensive tackle position. I mean, this is one of those dudes where in my very, very first 53-man roster projection, I didn't have him making the team. That's an L on my part, but you know what? He proved me wrong, and he proved a lot of people wrong. He played so damn well. He worked his freaking tail off, and I kind of wish I would have given him a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt, simply because when you go back and look at some of his numbers on some past Gus Bradley defenses, this young man was a very good football player. Now, I think he could actually get some more playing time than somebody like Solomon Thomas. He's been probably the best defensive tackle in the preseason games, but his ability to be able to get after the quarterback to also be able to disrupt the run game. And if you didn't watch the preseason, he got his big paw on a blocked field goal punt. I mean, he's been able to do it all. Darius Phylon is by far one of the biggest, biggest winners on this team. And it's why he ended up winning and why he ended up getting on that Raiders 53-man roster. So let me know down in the comments. You know what? I'm actually going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So if any of all y'all, and I mean any of you guys come across this video on YouTube, when you come across this, who is the biggest offseason winner? I want you to go down to that pinned comment and leave a remark. Who is the biggest offseason winner for the Las Vegas Raiders? Number three on my list here is Zay Jones, wide receiver. And the reason why this man made the list, earlier in the offseason, John Gruden said he is the best-shaped player out of all the guys, right? Not only that, he also said that he's one of the hardest working players he's ever seen. Mike Mayock had him, had him as a top five wide receiver when he was coming out of the draft out of ECU. If you want to look at some bananas numbers, Zay Jones coming out of college, 157 catches in his final season. But the other reason why he's a winner, he worked his, all, his, his way up to the number four wide receiver spot behind Henry Ruggs, behind Brian Edwards, behind Hunter Renfro. The fact that he was so good that he jumped John Brown, a, a player that I spoke very, very highly about. John Brown, I was like, this is going to be the second best, might be the best receiver on this Raiders team this year. He's not even on the roster anymore. Do you want to know why? It has nothing to do with John Brown. It simply has to do with Henry Ruggs looking good. Brian Edwards playing well. 
Hunter Renfro showing up in the slot, but most of all, that Zay Jones came to work every single day and got his shit done. And then he played well in the preseason. That's why John Brown isn't on this team. And the reason why I'll give some credit to the Raiders in terms of being a nice franchise is like John Brown was like, where do I rank on your depth chart? I feel like John Gruden and Mike Mag were like, you're probably the fifth or sixth guy. These guys outplayed you. Brown was like, will you let me go? They said yes. All I'm saying is Zay was the biggest reason why John Brown isn't a member of this team anymore. And it's not so much to do with Brown. It's everything to do with the other guys outworking him. Let's go to number two on my list here of Raiders offseason winners. Roderick Teamer. I had so many people hating on me for putting Teamer in my 53-man roster projection, but I knew for a fact that this young man was going to make the final roster for the Raiders. He's going to be a safety. He's going to play some special teams as well. But when Gus Bradley decided to bring in Teamer, I was like, this is definitely a name to watch out for. His ability on special teams reminds me a lot of Dale Levitt, where he might not be the best player in terms of your secondary, but... What he's going to be able to bring to special teams could be a reason why they end up keeping him over some other of these guys where you're like, Carl Joseph, don't get me wrong, Joseph is a good player, but Joseph doesn't offer you anything on special teams. Somebody even like uh, Isaiah Johnson's good player doesn't offer you anything on special teams. But Teamer was phenomenal, I thought, in the preseason. He had eight tackles in a game. He was flying all over the football field. Very, very impressed by him. If you guys are looking for some awesome Raiders gear, again, another major, major shout out to Black Sunday. Go ahead and hit up them at blacksundayshop.com where you guys can save up on a whole bunch of Raiders gear. If you want the t-shirt that I'm repping right now, it's at blacksundayshop.com. You can go down to the comments section. You can also go down in the live comments, because guess what? We're filming this bad boy live, because KJ Wright signed. And I was like, F it, we're dropping everything. We're doing whatever the hell we want today. But if you want some awesome Raiders gear, go to blacksundayshop.com. The biggest winner from the offseason. I mean, come on, y'all. You know it was going to be Nate Hobbs. Nate I've never met you a day in my life, but you know what? If you want to come hang out, if you want to come to my first wedding, maybe my second wedding, I don't even know at this point, you're more than welcome to come. Hobbs will start in the slot this year for the Las Vegas Raiders. He earned a 90.7 PFF grade in the preseason. That was by far the highest among all rookie players out of any NFL team, not just the Raiders, all the NFL teams. All this guy did was from the moment that he stepped on the field, he performed. And like, Hobbs was a player that I wasn't that high on in terms of the Raiders going out and drafting him. But his athletic ability has totally translated to the NFL. And he's been such a good listener, been such a good learner, that he's been taking in everything from the NFL, and he's been just totally transforming it onto the football field. He's got picks, he's getting after the quarterback, he's just breaking up passes left and right. There has not been a more player that I've been more proud of. Not There hasn't been another guy out there where I saw the Raiders on Twitter. They're like, who is the preseason MVP? And I literally put on Twitter, I was like, if anybody else says anything besides Nate Hobbs, you're wrong. Hobbs was by far the biggest effing winner on this Raiders team, and it's not even close. So what do you all think here? Right? If you think this is cool... Wait till you see our live watch party. Join us in Las Vegas. I am going to be live. Raiders vs. Ravens, Monday night football. And I can't wait to get it going. We're going to have drink deals. We're going to have food deals. You guys are going to be able to come on the Raiders report with me. It's going to be unlike any Raiders report you've ever seen. Now, if you want to go ahead and join the show, all you got to do, subscribe and visit Tailgate Social in Las Vegas. I'm going to probably get there at like 3.30 Las Vegas time, and I'm going to be there until they close. So if you want to come party with me, if you want to have a few drinks, please go ahead and subscribe. The link to get there is going to be in the description. Now, part of this video that I didn't want to do, but I'm like, you know what? Part of my job here at Chat Sports is to give it to you guys 100. And if you do winners, you have to do losers. It's just, we're talking about grown men. I hate participation trophies. And that's just part of the game here, right? So here's some of my biggest Raiders offseason losers. At number three, I'm going to throw out the name Nevin Lawson. And the reason why Lawson is a loser is because this guy was getting roasted in the preseason. And I don't know what Gruden, I don't know what Mike Mayock they see in this guy. However, Gruden always says, oh, I love his toughness. Oh, I love his leadership. You know what I like? Guys that can actually play football. And when you're getting beat by second, third, fourth string wide receivers in the preseason, I'm like, 
How can I trust you to actually go out there in the regular season? Like, one of the biggest reasons why Gruden gets ripped on the way he does because he falls in love with guys on their off-the-field stuff. You know what? I want to see dudes that can play. And if Nevin Lawson has already been busted for PEDs two times, and if you were in, when you were on the PEDs, you were bad, what's going to happen when you come off him? Like, I get the idea that he's a good team leader. But I don't, not that I don't care about that stuff, but like, you have to be able to perform on the field. And he's never been able to do that in the silver and black. Go ask any Raider person on Twitter, Instagram. Like, if how do they feel about Nevin Lawson? Nobody speaks highly of him. Why? He can't get it done on Sundays. Can't get it done on Mondays. Can't get it done on Thursday night football. Bottom line is this. If you're going to be a team that predicates itself on being good dudes, how can you sit here and tell me, like, Nevin Lawson, who has taken PEDs, who has gotten suspended two years in a row, who can't play on the field, deserves to be on this roster? It makes no sense to me. Number two, in terms of my Raiders offseason losers, Solomon Thomas. I was excited about the Solomon Thomas deal. I really was. I was like, you know what? He wanted to come here. It was a defense that reminded him of what he did at Stanford. However, all the reports this offseason have not really been very positive around Thomas in terms of, like, and they think he's undersized. They don't know how much playing time he's going to get. And when you look at the deal, you can't really move on from him because if you decide to cut him, you're going to eat like over $2 million. Sure, you save 60 k but saving 60 k in the NFL is like, hey, man, can I get a dollar? Sure, here's a dollar. Like, they don't give a shit about that stuff. But Darius Phylon, the way that he's played, the way that Gerald McCoy has played, that makes me a little bit nervous for Thomas where I'm like, he could literally be the fifth defensive tackle on our team. That makes him a big-time loser. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and hit me up on IG, I am at MitchellRent365. I just realized the other day that my DMs, for whatever reason, were closed. I don't know how the hell I did that. Maybe I did it one night when I was a little bit, uh, you know, having a good time. But uh, they're back open again. You can hit me up on Instagram, at MitchellRent365. I am going to be in Las Vegas. Again, if you want free Raiders tickets, yes, I said free, free Raiders tickets, Go look at my Raiders post on Instagram. It's got the one that says Tailgate Social. Check it out. Read the details. I don't want you guys to miss it. Bottom line, show up to Tailgate Social. Tell Mitchell Reds from the Raiders Report sent you. You're entered to win free Raiders tickets. Now, I got to give a shout out to my man, Trace. What up, Trace? Appreciate that you're watching the show. And I don't want to give any love to our producer, Jeremy, on Twitter at JIB. You can go after that guy. Seriously, I want you to message Jeremy on Twitter at JIB link and just say, F you. Let's now go to the number one biggest loser here for the Raiders this offseason. John Brown. And I get it. He's no longer a member of this team. Why am I talking about him? I'm talking about John Brown because I feel like it's my duty as a host to come up here and say I'm taking an L. Because I am taking a major L here with John Brown. Simply saying like I thought that Brown was going to be a great receiver for this team. I thought he was going to be the number one guy. Your Nelson Aguilar replacement. But you know what? Zay Jones outplayed him. Hunter Renfro outplayed him. Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards, Willie Sneed, they all outplayed him. And when it really came down to it, John Brown asked to be released. Not because he didn't want to be a Raider, because he really looked at the depth chart, he talked to the coaches, and he was the sixth best guy. The way that I look at that is this. Not that John Brown was bad, because he battled some injuries. The other guys outworked him. And if there's anything that I've learned from covering this team, if you can work and you show up to practice every day, and you give it your all, that's going to put a lot of confidence in John Gruden. That's why John Brown's been the biggest loser, and that's why he will be the biggest loser, because you're looking at September 2nd. As it stands right now, he's not on an NFL roster. Sure, he's still made a lot of money, but I'm sorry, John Brown, biggest loser this offseason. So what I want you guys to do is keep him coming. Give me another Raiders offseason winner, and I want you to give me a Raiders offseason loser. If there's a name that I forgot, please, 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 Go ahead, let me know. Always curious what you guys have to say.